Urban Daddy. Morning, everybody. We. He feels alright. We don't feel very well this morning, do we? So we're helping each other a lot, aren't we, Orla? Well done, Orla. Well done, Daddy. We're helping each other. We've got swings as usual coming at you today. This is a long one. We're hitting blocks. That was slower than I was expecting. So answer to yesterday's question is... It's a lie at impact. There you go. It's the lie delivered at impact. Not the same as the static. It can be, but it often changes. And it's the most important number. One I teach with loads. Today's question... I ask them questions now, Orla. Hold them, Daddy. They have to learn stuff, you see. Is what loft should you use on your driver? There you go. See how you answer that one. That's a tricky one. Right, school run time. Well done, Orla. So taking a look at today's golf swing, we see a very long back swing. This is the knee-jerk reaction that people are going to see here. Broken down left arm, club going back onto his shoulder. I see very strange wrist angles. He mentions he hits it to the right. Now, I did a little bit of filming earlier just to confirm this in my head because it's quite a funny angle. So you can see here as I test how it looks subject to what wrist angles I'm putting in. So for me to get my wrist cupped at the top of that bent left arm gives me that wrist condition that we see there opposed to the flat looks like it continues more with the left arm. So we don't get this kind of change in wrist angle to forearm. Then what we see on the way down, which makes me think that his club face control isn't that good, is we see the rear back. So we see as he comes down in to hit the ball, see the right foot wants to really rear back. He doesn't want to go through that one. He wants to hang back on that foot. That is often a case of people trying to get the path to move left because they can feel the face is open to the path. Let's look about left arm collapsing, wrist angles, and then also trying to move your pressures through in a more constructive way to keep the path going more maybe towards target or even out to the right. I've snuck into town. So I've got a low camera just to show you the angle you're shooting at. First idea is going to be built around what your wrist and forearm are doing on that backswing. So from this angle, if I rotate my wrist this way and extend it, to extend is cupped, and then I rotate it this way and put that above my head, that's when we start seeing your backswing down here. If I then bend my left arm, let's see how far back it gets. Now, if I flatten my left wrist, don't add the pronation, just flatten it with my left arm and take that to the top. You can see now the club's stuffed up in the air more. Now, I can still bend my left arm like you're doing, but look, the club gets nowhere near as low. So I want you to think about how much you're turning your wrist this way with extending or not. Great drill. Going to use the Mizuno logo. Holding on the metal shaft here. I'm going to go top of my backswing, you can swing it there, I'm just putting it there to get a feeling. I've got the Mizuno logo is pointing back almost at me, I can see it, with the shaft pointing out down the ground in front of me. It's going to give you a feeling of that extension and that different wrist position. You want to do it this way. So the Mizuno logo is going to disappear from me, so as I rotate my arm that way, extend my wrist, Put that in the top of my back swing now. The Mizuno logo is much more pointing down at the ground. It's not pointing back out in front of me. Use that logo on your grip to get the feeling of those different wrist angles. It'll really help you. Let's answer your questions. Hey Mark, I've got a question from all the way across the pond. So I'm turning 30 this year and I'm playing off a 12. When I was in my early 20s, I was playing off an 8 or a 9 and that was the best golf that I've ever played. And I'd like to get back into the single digits again. So what are your top tips to make sure, or at least try as best I can, to be a better golfer at 40 than I am now turning 30? Cheers, bro. Cheers, bro. Just making some lunch. Soup time. 
I don't feel like I'm a better player now than I was when I was younger purely because the time is harder. Time I put towards my golf obviously is a lot less so that's where my performances are changing. Things I do think about quite a lot now though are my levels of fitness. Warming up, warming down before games. For me it is crucially important otherwise my back starts to ache. Uh, I don't feel like I could play two days in a row. My knee, my right knee starts, feels like it gets inflamed a little bit. I think sustaining levels is a good thing. Also, I now look at my game in such a different way because of technology, because I'm watching myself play so often. So make sure you keep watching yourself play, get things like game golf, measure your abilities in different regions because they change. I used to be a very good chipper. I am now not a very good chipper. So it's managing your game as you get older to make sure you maintain that level and even try to push it back forwards. If you can though, spend more time practicing like you did when you were younger. Hi Mark, what's the impact of shortening your follow through when you're pitching? Why does that help them? And if it does, I don't know why. Thanks Mark. The reason you see shorter follow throughs, held off follow throughs they're called, is two things. One, people are trying to control the amount of speed that goes through that shot, so they're controlling length of back swing, length of follow through is a quite a balanced way of feeling. You're controlling the speed, length, distance, kind of energy transfer to the ball. Often you're hitting down at the ball more, so what happens is you're putting the energy down and through, opposed to you go down. So let's say I hit four down with an iron. If I'm hitting like a pitch shot, I might be six or eight down sometimes, so I feel like I'm hitting down and through more. The other reason is that the player doesn't really want to get any rotations in their hands is the feeling. So they're going to try and hold their hands off, which stops that club out in front of them. It's something all good players do and it works. It helps students get the feeling of using the club face in a very different way. So thinking about that follow through to help move that path, I've got my two, oh that way, assistants to help me. So you've got them guys, do it. So doing follow throughs up against the wall, look like this. See how their right foot's gone, Ola? Follow through, this foot up, boom. Yeah, it comes away from the wall. This is a great way of getting the feeling of the hips going forwards. Have the upper body, go on, my leader. Extending back this way with the hips forward as the heel comes away from the wall. Right, thanks guys, one step, thank you. Thank you. Right. As you were, so stood up against the wall, heel touching it, making follow throughs where you feel like your heel comes away from the wall as you turn. It's a great way of getting the feeling of pushing those hips forward, getting that follow through in a different pattern, which will help you move the path more to the right. Doing it in your slippers as well. It just adds to the coolness of it. Now you have to learn stuff, you see. There you go, more lessons done, hope that helps. In the kitchen, Thursday night. It's Fajitas night, yes please. Remember, subscribe to the channel, also follow me, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If you wanna get involved with the show, send your video questions, send me those swings. See you all tomorrow. I've done that thing. Now you have to learn stuff, you see.